Okay, I think we should get started. Um, first, I want to welcome everyone. This is our second workshop for our transportation innovation series. Um, I am Megan Festuca, an environmental specialist with the town of North Hempstead. I really wanna thank everyone for coming and being with us this evening. It's a rainy evening, so a good day to stay inside and learn about some, some fun outside activities when it gets nicer out. Um, so tonight's workshop is titled Walk or Bike North Hempstead and will be facilitated by Let's Move Long Island. Our presenters will be providing a virtual tour of North Hempstead's walkable downtowns, walking and hiking trails and biking opportunities. And before we get started, I, I really want to thank Councilwoman Marianne Dalamonte and I think Councilwoman Veronica Lurby, I thought she was here. I don't know if she's having some computer problems, but I want to thank you both for joining us tonight. Um, we really appreciate your support on these important programs for the public. And also Councilwoman Dalamonte will be sharing some great information related to biking in North Hempstead during the workshop. So stay tuned for that. Um, I also want to let everyone know that you have been muted, but we encourage everyone to ask any questions you have throughout the presentation by typing them into the chat box. And then at the conclusion of the presentation, um, they'll be answered by all of our panelists. And also this workshop is being recorded and will be posted on the town's climate action webpage for anyone who may have missed it or would like to watch it again. Um, next slide, please. So before our presenters begin, I do wanna share that the town is currently taking actions to combat climate change and the town's Go Green North Hempstead logo represents our mission to engage and inspire residents, businesses, and other municipalities throughout the town to participate in actions that will foster ecological balance, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and help North Hempstead adapt to a changing climate, ensuring a healthy, resilient community now and in the future. And this transportation innovation series is part of these climate initiatives and is also part of our public engagement plan. Um, the workshops will help with the goals of reducing dependency on fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles in the town. According to the Long Island Carbon Footprint Project, vehicle emissions make up approximately 31% of emissions on Long Island. So it's really important that we all do our part to reduce them. And now I am pleased to introduce tonight's facilitators and presenters. Uh, first, we have Rosemary Mascali, who is co-chair of the U.S. Green Building Council Long Island Sustainable Transportation Committee, which leads the Let's Move Long Island Active Transportation Initiative. And we also have Mindy Germain, who is also active with Let's Move Long Island and with her consultancy EcoLeap, she helps the town of North Hempstead with climate action planning and, and community engagement. We're also very to ha happy to have Holly Byrne, the executive director of the Port Washington BID, Richard Bransifort, the president of the Roslyn Chamber of Commerce, and Matt Dono, the co-president of the Manhasset Chamber of Commerce. And now I will pass it on to Rosemary to get us started. Thank you, Megan, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our agenda today was, we'll start with just an overview of what the Let's Move Long Island initiative is and some of the benefits of active transportation, biking and walking. Uh, then Mindy will take us through some of the miles of beautiful North Hempstead trails that you may or may not be familiar with. Hopefully by the end of, of tonight, you'll be more familiar with them. Then it'll be back to me to talk about all the da beautiful downtowns in the town of North Hempstead and things you can do in, with a five, 10 or 15 minute walk. Uh, from the center of the downtown. Uh, then we'll wrap it up with uh, some future active transportation plans. So next slide, please, Sandy. I mean, Mindy. <laughs> okay, next slide. So what is Let's Move Long Island? Uh, we're a collaboration of Long Island municipalities, schools, businesses, and other organizations that are working together to promote active transportation across Long Island. We have three goals. One is to promote biking and walking alone or connected to public transit. A second is to encourage bike and pedestrian safety education, especially for students. And third is to support safe, walkable um, and biking infrastructure just by advocating for it. Next slide, Brittany. So what are the benefits? Why are we doing this? There's uh, four categories of benefits for active transportation. There's health benefits uh, from lowering your blood pressure, increasing your energy, reducing the risk of depression, heart disease, obesity, 
adult onset uh, osteoporosis, uh, diabetes, osteoporosis, um, as well as lowering your stress levels. There's also environmental benefits and social and safety benefits. So some of the environmental benefits Megan was just discussing, cutting greenhouse gas emissions and reducing our air pollutants, uh, saving valuable green space. And then from a social and safety standpoint, you can increase contact with your neighbors by walking, seeing them, increasing interaction rather than just driving by in your car and, and, and not doing that. You can have more equitable access to education and jobs, recreation, healthcare, and more eyes on the streets, safer, calmer streets. And then beyond those benefits, there's also economic benefits. And we have several representatives of the chambers here that can really speak to that, that walkable neighborhoods are catalysts for economic development and downtown revitalization. And that really helps us all. It helps the businesses, but it helps the community in having a vibrant downtown without, you know, with not closed storefronts, but nice open storefronts and, and lots of people and activity. It's also cheaper. You could, you know, having that second car cost you six to $8,000 a year. If you bike or walk instead, it's either free or the average cost of owning a, maintaining a bike is $150 a year. And then there's a lot of wear and tear on the roads that, that can be avoided. So that's why we're doing it. Those are the benefits of active transportation. And next slide is a little bit about where you can learn a little bit more. We have a, a website, letsmovelongisland.com. Uh, uh, on that, you'll see ideas for how to promote active transportation to your residents, students, or employees. If you're representing with a company and you want to do that with your companies or, or with the school, um, it, there's a lot of resources available. Uh, part of our research when we put together this initiative was seeing all the different organizations that are, are promoting uh, walking and biking on, on Long Island and making sure everybody's aware of them and uses them. And we also spotlight an organization every month. Uh, and so and we keep all the spotlights from the previous months. And that's a great way to get ideas of what other you know, villages and towns and, and companies are doing on Long Island to promote active transportation and hopefully get more people to do that. So now I'd like to introduce our council, councilwoman, Marianne Del Monte, who's been a real fierce advocate for uh, uh, active transportation and biking. Uh, so take it away, Marianne. Thank you, Rosemary, for that introduction. I am so happy to be here with all of you tonight. And I have some exciting and wonderful news to share. But first, I'd like to give a quick but heartful thank you to everyone who has helped put this event together. Thank you to the supervisor and the town board, both past and present, for the development and stewardship of our walkable communities and our hiking and biking trails. Thank you to Let's Move Long Island for all the work you do to promote active transportation. And thank you to the Town of North Hampstead's Climate Smart Communities Task Force for the incredibly important work you're doing now to help guide us towards a more sustainable future. So, the first bit of news I'd like to share with you tonight is that my office created a new flyer with 11 bike and helmet safety tips. Please read and follow all of the tips. When you see this flyer pop up on social media or at a local shop on your next visit, some of the tips include wearing a properly fitted helmet, bright clothing to improve your visibility, riding a bike is the right Riding a bike, you need to make sure that you're riding the right size for you and making sure your bike is in good working order. So next slide about the bike rodeo helmet safety event. Next, I'd like to tell you about the bike rodeo and helmet safety event that is coming up on Wednesday, April 27th at 6 p.m. in the skating rink at Manor Haven Beach Park. This is a great event for young riders to learn about and practice bike safety. A bicycle rodeo is a series of courses that provides children the opportunity to practice safety and agility skills using their own bicycles. I encourage every parent with a new or developing bike rider to register your child for this event by calling 311. It's very simple to register. All participants must bring their own bicycle and helmet. As the weather warms and the days get longer, let's do all we can to help our kids develop their skills and a safety first mindset. 
Okay, finally, I am really excited to share this news with you. I have been working on working with an organization called Pedal Share since last year to bring a bike share program to Port Washington. Last September, under the leadership of Supervisor Bosworth, the town board approved my resolution to enter into an agreement with Pedal Share for their bike sharing services. This is no cost to the town. Since then, I have been waiting patiently and following up, I think every two weeks with Pedal Share to secure a sponsor for the project, allowing them to move forward with purchasing the bikes and installing the bike racks. I am pleased to announce that Pedal Share, yay, has secured Beth Page Federal Credit Union as its sponsor. Pedal Share hopes to have its bicycles in Port Washington sometime in May. So in May, I hope you will all download the Pedal Share app and look for their bikes. They're gonna be located at the Long Island Railroad Station, the Town Dock and Manor Haven Beach Park. So I just want everyone to know, we are the first, first in Nassau County to have this. This was, people from Nassau County were calling me in September and October and being like, I can't believe you're doing this. We wanted to be first. So I truly, truly have to thank the, the previous board from last year for making this work for me. And we've been working on this. Aaron, I know he's um, one of the attendees today. Aaron Molina and I have been working so hard on this. And I really have to thank Mindy Germain for helping me so much with this bike rodeo event. She really helped us put it together. She put us in contact with the right people. And we're really just trying to make, you know, we're trying to showcase so people could come in from the city, get on a bike from Long Island Railroad, go down to the town dock, go to Manor Haven Beach Park. They could ride it to the Sands Point Preserve. There's so much you can do in, the, in this community. They could ride it to Manhasset. They could ride it into Roslyn. So I am so excited about this program. And I promise you, we will be doing a press conference when these bikes are in, in May. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. Councilwoman Marianne Del Monte, I will just share um, that getting a bike share, especially being the first in Nassau County, is a Herculean effort. And we are incredibly grateful. And I'm sure the chat is going to blow up with, um, with uh, people talking about this. So wait, hold on one second. I just had a little problem. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay. So again, thank you, Marianne, for uh, for making that happen in uh, in Port Washington. So um, good evening. I am Mindy, and um, with spring upon us, I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of the miles of trails for various levels of walking, biking, and jogging in the town. For each trail, I will give you a feel for the location, conditions, distance, amenities, and parking. Don't worry about taking notes. This presentation will be posted online and we will send you a link. So buckle up and here we go. We're gonna start with the North Hempstead Beach Park Shoreline Trail in Port Washington. It is a passive recreational trail with beautiful views of Hempstead Harbor. And as you can see on this map, it offers a 1.92 mile long waterfront trail and if you go there and back, it's almost four miles. That trail is pretty flat and meandering with some light hills and scenic overlooks that have benches. On this trail, you will see wetlands, wildlife, and birds. Reviewers say, I love this trail because it's hidden from the road with 90% water views. What you need to know about this trail. These trails were planned and they are maintained by the town of North Hempstead. Parking and bathrooms are available at the adjacent North Hempstead Beach Park, which is on Port Washington's West Shore Road. Next, for the adventurous, 
the town has worked with an organization called CLIMB, which stands for Concerned Long Island Mountain Bicyclists, to create a five mile predominantly mountain bike trail system at Hempstead Harbor Woods on West Shore Road in Port Washington. This is the historic site of the former sand mining operations in Port Washington. These, there are 19 trails with cross country conditions. The main loop is about 1.25 miles with additional loops to build off of that. The difficulty of these trails ranges from advanced beginner to double black diamond. And on the most difficult sections for experts, reviewers boast, it's got some awesome flows, some cool tech features and some sharp grinding up hills works your muscles a lot. Pictured here are volunteers from CLIMB constructing the trail four years ago. And this is another project that was zero cost to the town because of the volunteers that put it together. So what you need to know about these trails is parking is available at the aerodrome entrance across from Tilken Gravel, which is at 145 West Shore Road in Port Washington. The easier trails are shared between bikers and hikers, so bikers are warned to be courteous of hikers. If you want more information and to see the trail map, you can go to trailforks.com. Next, we're going to go to Baywalk, which is in the village of Port Washington North. Baywalk, and you can see it here along the water, is a one quarter, quarter of a mile paved waterfront walkway in Port Washington that meanders with breathtaking views of Manhasset Bay. It includes a kayak launch, bike repair station, open air nautical art exhibit, benches, picnic tables, and environmental education. Reviewers call it a lovely little walking pathway with lots of cute local shopping places nearby to either quench your thirst, find a gift, or settle a rumbling stomach. What you need to know, it was planned, maintained, and constructed by the village of Port Washington North. Parking is at 64 Shore Road in Port Washington, and restroom facilities are at the adjacent town dock or stop and shop across the street. Next, we will go to the beautiful Sands Point Preserve in Port Washington, which offers six marked trails ranging from a quarter acre to what I'm sorry, from a quarter of a mile to one mile that can be combined. The 218 acre preserve is situated on the original Guggenheim estate with a great lawn, rose garden, woodland playground, dog run, forest trails, pond area, and the Fillets, Castle Gould, and Hempstead Mansions. Yelp reviewers say the trails are easy and great for families to explore, or there's nice gray grassy areas with benches to just hang out. The trails are predominantly cross country, in the woods, pretty flat and meandering with some light hills. It is great for strolling, hiking, jogging, or running. What to know? The preserve is owned by Nassau County and it is maintained and operated by the Sands Point Preserve Conservancy. The preserve is gated, emission is $15 per car, yet it's free for members. The address is 127 Middle Neck Road in Sands Point, New York. Restrooms are located in Castle Gould's Black Box and the Welcome Center. For more information, including a robust event schedule, go to sandspointconservancy.org. Now we will go to Roslyn and we will visit the Nassau County Museum of Art in Roslyn, which offers trails that vary in length and difficulty from paved to cross country. What people love is that it offers shade and benches. The paved roadway that circles the estate is one mile or you can cut through the grass and do a half mile loop. The trails feature a magnificent sculpture collections, formal gardens and woodsy trails. Reviewers call it a small gem on, a magnif on magnificent grounds. What to know? There is complimentary parking on premises. The address is One Museum Drive in Roslyn Harbor. Portions are handicap accessible. Bathrooms are located in the museum. And for more information, as well as a robust event schedule, go to nassaumuseum.org. 
And our last stop will be Cedarmere Park. Cedarmere Park was the country home of prominent 19th century poet, newspaper editor, and civic leader, William Cullen Bryant. It is a seven acre site on the west side of Bryant Avenue in the quaint village of Roslyn Harbor. Yelp reviewers call it a cute little date slash picnic spot. The property has a pond, boathouse, house, mill, gardens, and a spectacular landscape designed by Bryant. Here, Bryant sought sanctuary from the congestion and chaos of the city, where he could rest, work on his poetry, and spend time surrounded by nature. The Friends of Cedarmere have a robust event schedule, which are mostly free because of generous sponsors and include butterfly releases, dance programs, concerts, painting classes, and more. So what to know? Cedarmere was bequeathed by the family to Nassau County and the friends of Cedarmere preserve and manage the estate. Cedarmere has complimentary parking on premises. Portions are handicap accessible. Bathrooms are in the museum. And for more information, you can visit friendsofcedarmere.org. And that concludes my little tour of the trails around the town of North Hempstead. I'll hand it over to Rosemary to take you through our downtowns. Thank you, Mindy. And that was delightful. Oh, can't wait to get out on those trails. Uh, now uh, we have our friends from uh, a couple of the towns and then I'll be covering the ones who couldn't join us today to entice you with our downtowns uh, in the town of North Hempstead. And in each of the sh short presentations, we'll take you through, you know, if you come into the downtown, uh, what you can do with a five minute walk, with a 10 minute walk and a 15 minute walk. And all of those will get you the benefits of active transportation. Next chart. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Holly Byrne is the executive director of the Port Washington bid, uh, Holly. Hi, everybody, and thank you again for allowing me to share a little bit about our little slice of heaven up here. Um, for those who may be coming by train, we are the last stop, so you can fall asleep and get off the train and not miss <laughs> your stop. Um, but again, there is plenty of parking at the station as well as, and throughout the area. Um, if you go to the next slide, I believe it has the map, which I love. So kudos to those who developed this idea with the center being the train station and then spokes going out from there. Um, so at this moment, the bid is working along with the Long Island Railroad and MTA away to create bundles and itineraries and packages of how you could take the train, arrive to downtown Port Washington Main Street and then have a wonderful experience um, or come by car as well. Um, our new logo right now is Destination Port Washington, and we hope you'll make it your destination this summer. Um, so from here, I would say the hardest step is always the first step. So get here and start walking. Um, the, the main corridor of Main Street, you can take it right down to the water. It's worth a little bit of extra time. Get there and explore. Uh, Mindy has already mentioned Baywalk. You can experience Baywalk in several different ways. Um, the Port Washington Library has created an app where you, called Along Manhasset Bay. You can download it and get a historical perspective of that same walk. So standing in one spot, looking at what you see in real time, and the app will show you what it looked like 100 years ago while you're hearing the, the audio tour explaining how that goes. Um, again, you can find that through our, um, the Port Washington Library along Manhasset Bay. So the history is really um, enticing and exciting. But if you're here real time, again, there's so much to explore when you head down that way. Um, we are also, the bid is partnering with Discover Long Island and you'll see they just launched this week um, their car free getaways and Port Washington is one of many um, on Long Island that are featured. And we will have more developed, um, again, suggested itineraries. How would you spend your day, whether it's grabbing a muffin at one of the local bakeries and then meandering your way down to some fun shops and getting gift ideas and 
you really should just shop for yourself too. Um, have lunch, enjoy a few snacks, watch the sunset. On Fridays in the summer, we have live performances at Sunset Park, and then you can meander your way back. So it can be an afternoon, it could be a day. And if you just need to stay, we have a new hotel, Fathoms Marina. Spend the night and continue your walking exploration the next day. Um, so uh, can you go ahead to the next slide? I just wanted to point out that the way this map works is that the green circle is your five minute walk shed. And over here, you can see everything that you can access in five minutes. And then um, over here, I'm sorry, the yellow is 10 minutes and you can see everything that you can access in 10 minutes. And then 15 minutes exam is the uh, purplish area. Um, and just also that we have some events there is a um, art exhibit that's coming to Port Washington that Councilman Del Monte has been instrumental in making happen. There's going to be 55 O trees from the boulevard to the bay that are going to have yarn arn hugs for Earth Month. Um, and the students in the high school have created hello, my name is tags that will tell you all different information about that, that, that tree. Port Outdoors is, um, Holly, why don't you explain Port Outdoors? Uh, so this year will be our third year of Port Outdoors. It kind of came about as our response to the COVID crisis, um, but I think it's become such a well-loved event. People look forward to Thursday nights in Port Washington. This year, it'll always be on the third Thursday from May through September with a bonus fourth Thursday in September. And it alternates sections of, Manhas of Main Street what we find the street closes at five o'clock to cars. And at that five o'clock is when we see families, strollers, our senior population strolling and using it as a really walking exercise, get moving kind of experience. And then if you have a reservation, sit down for dinner and enjoy or shop at one of the uh, stores that are open. So again, starting in May on the third Thursday, there'll be six um, evenings through the summer and um, early fall. Um, Harbor Fest is coming back this year. Woo, everybody. Um, Sunday, June 5th. Again, a, a really exciting, fun um, event. Make it a walking day. Absolutely easy to do. Um, and then Friday night, the band Shell will have their Friday night concerts free to all. And again, combine that with a walk and a dinner and a shop. It's a great, a great experience. Uh, all right. So, and this program, I just, is just so wonderful. These signs are scattered throughout Port Washington, encouraging walkers to find their way to just 12 minutes and you're at the library, or maybe it's 15 minutes and you're at the dock at Morgan's dock. Um, Mindy was a huge part of the creation here. And I think we're just the lucky recipients um, but again, encouraging walking to find what you're looking for. Um, so again, I encourage you to find them along the way. So here's this, our newest great adventure. This is our app, Triport First. And for those of you who haven't downloaded it, I'm going to give you a second. You're going to go to your <laughs> app store. You're going to search Triport First and download it. And here we play the Jeopardy tune. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Truly, though, take the time and download the app. It is a huge, fantastic resource. Uh, you'll see here on the homepage to find events. You want to see what's going on this weekend? Click the event, events button on the homepage. Hot deals will show you discounts available at different, and that's a rotating list. Play and stay, something you want to do for fun or, how, or where to spend the night. Um, and then in that far right column is what you see if you swipe left on the app. Um, on, and that has expanded and changing kind of all the time. You'll see on the water, um, different attractions. Now you'll also see Let's Walk PW. So if you'd like to learn more about that, um, you'll also see um, the information we're bringing forward with Discover Long Island and the, the car-free getaways um, as well. So, and if we'll add more, and as we're doing this, get this Let's Walk Long Island, we'll get that featured there, find these maps. It's a great way to 
put it in the palm of your hand, find everything you need about Port Washington. So I'll finish it with try port first, get it at your, um, at your app store. Can I add one thing to that, if you don't mind? Sure. The one thing, if you're, say your kids say, we want Mexican food, go to dine, you type in Mexican, all the Mexican restaurants in Port Washington come up. You want to type in Italian, the Italian restaurants come up. If not, you just want to browse, it's in alphabetical order. It is amazing. And then you go to the phone number, you click on it and it calls. You want to type them an email. If the email's there, you click on it, it, it you could start an email to them. It's an amazing, amazing app. Um, we've been, you know, the BID, I'm on the board. Um, we have an amazing executive director and we have been researching this for a very long time with the Chamber of Commerce, but I'm, you're going to love it once you uh, use it. And it also gives you walking directions. Yes. Yep. Uh, and because it's dynamic, we can update it and change it. So again, all this information we're sharing today, we're going to be able to add that and you'll be able to find it. And when you say, what was that they were talking about? Try port first. Thank you. Okay. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, we now have Richard Branch of Fort, president of the Roslyn Chamber of Commerce, who's going to entice us with everything Roslyn. Well, this is uh, the 90th anniversary of the founding of Roslyn Village. It's also the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Village of East Hills. Um, Roslyn is just a wealth of places to visit and to uh, live there. I've lived in the village since 1979. I was first uh, brought to the village in 1972 by Epi from my father's place, who said, hey, there's a hippie haven coming here. This is gonna be the next East Village. And I said, I wanna live here one day. I opened my first office for Good Times Magazine on Lumber Road. And our offices have always been pretty close to the uh, greater Roslyn area. Uh, there's just a wealth of things to do. Strolling through downtown Roslyn, of course you have what we're noted for, you have the uh, clock tower, 1895 clock tower, right by the Roslyn Theater. Um, but you have all kinds of treasures that are within that five, 10 and 15 minute walk. If we're moving just a half a block up, we're in Gary Park, better known to the Roslyn residents as the Roslyn Duck Pond, uh, because of the preponderance of ducks and geese that uh, inhabit the park, but uh, it's been beautifully restored in the last year and a half. It's one of the real treasures. As you enter the park, you can't help but see the gi gigantic, really, McKay, uh, Mackey horses that uh, grace the entranceway. They're part of two horses that were on the original um, Mackey estate. Now, at one time, the Mackey estate was owned by a multimillionaire. His property ran from approximately uh, Northern Boulevard to Glen Cove Road to Roslyn Road to the Long Island Expressway. So this now is basically all of these hills, a good portion of Roslyn Heights and a little, little outskirt of Roslyn itself. Um, the second horse is at the entrance to Roslyn High School. So when you're driving to the high school, dropping or picking up your children from the, from the school, that's one of the two horses. Interesting about the horse in Gary Park was that it was actually discovered a couple of years ago by some of the Landmark Society people in the backyard of one of the houses in East Hills. It had been there for God knows how long. It was just part of the property and sitting there forever. So it's been beautifully restored. When you come into the middle of uh, Gary Park, you've got the pond itself, you've got a gazebo, and then you've got the waterfront area that you can walk to. You'll see the back side of the stores and restaurants on Old Northern Boulevard. Continuing right through the middle of the park, we come to the uh, Bryant Library, better known as the uh, Roslyn War Memorial back in 1930 when it was built. It's a beautiful structure. It houses a great collection of books and really historical documents. They've got a great uh, archive section for the history of our whole area. Directly opposite it is the Valentine House. Now, the Valentine House, when I first moved there, was Village Hall. And uh, it was a very small structure. But uh, today, it's a bookstore uh, for the library. And it really has an extremely interesting selection of books at very, very low prices. 
If we go back to the old Northern Boulevard area, we've got the gristmill, which is being uh, perfectly restored. It costs a few million dollars to do it, but donations have come in quite a bit. And as you walk through the town, almost every single building there is this historical importance. It was really something that uh, was unique in the fact that they were restored back in 1960. Dr. Gary and Perry, Peggy Gary, his wife, formed the Roslyn Landmark Society, and they were largely responsible for saving a good portion of Roslyn Village. Uh, part of the village was lost when they built the Roslyn Viaduct. Um, so you've got a lot of buildings there that are very interesting to look at. Some of them were owned by the original people like Captain Remsen. Um, so it's a, it's a really distinct area. If you continue down a little bit, you head towards the viaduct and you go past where they have uh, the shopping centers. Harborview is on one side where the old Blue Spruce Inn used to be. Continuing down though on, uh, on uh, Bryant Avenue, just 10 minutes away is Cedarmere, which was shown previously, but it, it really is a magnificent structure. They have benches that you can just sit there and look out at the water. In the, the holiday season, it's beautifully decorated. They do great events like concerts, but they also have things like ice cream socials. So it, it's a fantastic thing to get involved in. If you head in the other direction, you're kind of ambitious if you came out from the Roslyn train station, or if you were at Gary Park and you wanted to continue on up just a little ways to IU Willits, you're in Clark Gardens. So all this is in walking distance of the downtown. In the last three months, seven new businesses have opened up in the village, kind of revitalizing what old Northern Boulevard used to be, which was stores, quaint restaurants. Everyone of course knows about Hendrick's Tavern. It was the George Washington Manor. And as they can say with about a thousand places in America, George Washington slept there. And he noted in his diary that he had a very good meal, thanks to the underdunks who were his hosts there. So we would certainly invite everyone to come down. Uh, there's three concerts going to be taking place in Gary Park. We have a, a classic Clapton band coming in in July. Uh, there's a Stevie Wonder tribute band that the town of North Hempstead is putting on in uh, August. And uh, they're going to try something new. Town of North, North Hempstead is presenting Shakespeare in the Park in uh, the end of June. And years ago, years ago, we tried a poetry slam at Heads and Tails restaurant. And we were shocked at how many people showed up for it, including Maya Galanti, who was a poet and her and her husband came down and read poetry. So we're gonna try another poetry slam. So again, we would certainly invite everyone to come down and rediscover Roslyn Village. Uh, it's part of a beautiful day. We have a group of people coming in from Bayshore. They're gonna be going to the P Kings Point Preserve. Uh, then they're coming to Roslyn Village and then they're going over to Clark Gardens. So the nice thing is that we interact with Manhasset and Port Washington and Great Neck. So people can really come in and make a day of it, go and visit the different communities. They each have a lot to offer and just have a great time and just kind of rediscover what we all know that this is a great place to live and it's certainly a great place to visit. Well, thank you so much, Richard. That was a great overview of what Rosalind has to offer. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Matt Dono, who's a co-president of the Manhasset Chamber. That's where I live. So Matt, come on, give it away. <laughs> Thanks, Rosemary. Hi, I'm Matthew Dono. I'm the co-president of the Manhasset Chamber. Uh, Manhasset, the town of Manhasset was settled in 1680. Um, and in 1898, when the Long Island Railroad brought the train into Manhasset, the town grew around where the train station is, which is the center of our township. Uh, being an ideal commuter town, it's only 40 minutes by train to Manhattan. Uh, so jump on a train, come on out and see the town. From town and from the train station, there's great walkability. You'll be dropped right in the center of town on Planum Road. Uh, a block away is Mary Jane Davis Park, which has a beautiful gazebo, a playground for kids. Um, it is right where the town of North Hempstead Town Hall is located. You can stop in and see Councilman Councilwoman Del Monte. <laughs> um, also in town, right there, if you cross the street, you have four or five, a great little quarter, corner coffee shop that, and many other restaurants right within your five minute walkability from the train station. Uh, as you head down the road, there is Manhasset Cinemas, um, which features plenty of independent films 
and other specials that go on and events that go on with the chamber throughout the year as well. Um, from there, if you expand your walking in, in about 10, 10 minute walk, you have the high school right down Manhattan Avenue, which is right down the street from the train station. And if you go the opposite direction, you'll head towards the Manhasset Library, which is amazingly renovated and has been updated in my lifetime from what it once was as a kid. Uh, it's state of the art, unbelievable place to go. Great, has great activities that they host for the community, um, events and other programs that go on there. Uh, again, shopping and restaurants up and down Plandome Road. Um, due to COVID, just like Port Washington, Manhasset had created their own outdoor dining event called the Manhasset El Fresco. Uh, so in June, July, and September, we have an outdoor dining event that happens twice a month. Uh, that all the we close down the roads, keep the restaurants bring tables out into the street. We have live music. Uh, everybody from the town comes out and participates. It's a great community event. Um, in August this year, we're actually going to be doing a movie in the park. So it will, you know, a way again to experience the community and everything that's going on there. If you expand your walk a little bit farther and go out to Northern Boulevard, which would be about the 15 mile mark, you may have heard of the world-class shopping of the Americana, uh, which is a beautiful place that you can walk to. It's sidewalks all the way to get down to it. Um, so it's safe to, to travel down to uh, the Americana. They have Unbelievable shopping, great restaurants, um, as well as you go the other way on Northern Boulevard, you can go down to um, Manhasset Valley Park, uh, which actually features this amazing 9-11 uh, memorial that um, Councilwoman Del Monte and the other council uh, members have dedicated last year uh, to remember the, the memorial of it. There's a beam there that's actually from the World Trade Center. It's unbelievable. It's something that shouldn't be missed. Uh, the park itself is beautifully manicured and kept by the Parks Department of the Town of North Hempstead, along with all of our other parks that are within the Town of North Hempstead. Um, Manhasset's also made up of uh, five villages, which uh, Councilwoman Del Monte is actually represents them. Uh, there's many little parks and nooks within all of our villages that are amazing as well, um, that are walkable, that have playgrounds, things to do within the community that make, if you live in the community, a walkable location from Manhasset to these parks and centers. Um, the Manhasset Chamber has actually just launched a brand new website, uh, manhassettchamber.com. It's viewable on your phone or online. If you go onto it, there is a community calendar that has every event from chamber events to every local organization to what's going on with the high schools, and their, their events, um, Manhasset just became state champs in their basketball team. They're, they're gonna be celebrating that coming soon. There's a parade that's gonna be going on for that. Uh, it's unbelievable all the stuff that goes on in this town. Um, if you wanna know about the history of the town on the website, there's about Manhasset. It'll tell you everything that's ever, you could ever wanna know about Manhasset, where to go, places of interest. Um, all the dining restaurants, their menus are posted. So if you're not sure what to eat, go on. You can see the menus. You can figure out what you want to eat. Um, it's just a wonderful place. I was born and raised in this town, and I'm the fourth generation of living there. So I've been around Manhattan my whole life. I, you know, nothing but unbelievable things to say about the, the community. <laughs> Did I miss anything, Rosemary? <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. And I live in Plandome Heights, totally walkable uh, to Plandome Road. And I love yes. it. You know, we the, the big thing on Long Island is transit oriented development. We've had it all along. And a lot of these, these downtowns really are, you know, are little transit oriented developments that we all can take advantage of and, and walk to and, and, and uh, take advantage of. Uh, now, we couldn't have representatives today. They couldn't make it uh, to Great Neck and to um, Williston Park and Westbury, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview <coughs> so that you can uh, check them out, too. They provided us this information. So here's uh, Great Neck. Uh, Long Island Railroad Station is the center point here. Within a five-minute walk, uh, there's wonderful shops and restaurants. There's fiber, Firefighters Park. Uh, within a 10-minute walk uh, the, is the entire downtown of Great Neck Plaza lots of shops and dining opportunities. 
a little further in a 15 minute walk, there's more shops and, and restaurants and historic antique uh, district of, of Great Neck. Uh, for their upcoming events, they have their summer promenade where Great Neck transforms their downtown streets uh, into outdoor dining uh, stations every uh, Thursday this year from June 23rd to July 21st. The streets will be closed to traffic uh, for residents to dine outside and enjoy live music and entertainment. And then the fall for Halloween, uh, their fall event will be on October 30th on Bond Street, uh, where uh, there's games, carnival rides, spooky crafts, and, and uh, other miscellaneous uh, things from 1230 to 3. And there's their website, shopgreatneck.com, for more information about all the uh, shops and activities in Great Neck. Uh, next, I'll talk about Williston Park, another nice walkable downtown. Um, next chart, uh, here, uh, within a five minute walk, also wonderful shops and restaurants, a 9-11 Memorial, St. Aidan's Church, um, the East Williston Public Library and Village Hall. Uh, walking a little further, uh, there's a 10 minute walk uh, to the Long Island Railroad Station. Uh, this point of origin, by the way, if you see from the top, was the corner of Willis and Hillside Avenue, just kind of the center of their, their town. And then uh, going out for a 15-minute walk, there's more shops and restaurants and the John uh, Kamamir Park. Um, upcoming events in, uh, in Williston uh, is the Williston Day Street Fair on September 18th, and they plan a 5K race uh, with a date to be announced. Uh, there, uh, for more information, is the chamber of the Williston's.com. And then, last, um, they didn't provide us the information, but I'll show you some of the beautiful pictures of Westbury and that uh, the space at Westbury Theater, if you've never been in there, is really cool. I, I was there for an event once, and it's a venue for concerts, movies, or other special occasions. And it's really nicely done in, inside, uh, a redone of it. Uh, and they've done a lot of downtown revitalization, started their efforts back in 1999 and uh, have a lot of streetscape improvements, new vintage street lights with pedestrian lanterns, road signs and flower baskets uh, all add to the charm. So that's another great uh, downtown we enjoy uh, in uh, the town of North Hempstead. And now I'll turn it back to you, Mindy. Great. So um, the future of active transportation in the town of North Hempstead. Well, as you've heard from our councilwoman, the town likes to be the first and they like to be different and they like to be bold. So our future of active transportation is beyond trails on the ground and actually includes trails in the water. You guessed it, kayaking. So um, this here, I know it's hard to see, but you can download it later. This is the town of North Hempstead's Blue Way Trail Plan. And they, it has dotted lines that go around the peninsulas. And those lines are different colors. So if you see green, it means it's an easier, more navigable route. Um, yellow is moderate and um, orange is advanced. So that's more challenging water. So it's nice that you know before you go. Um, the squares, which I know you can't read now, but you will be able to download this, represent landing areas. So within those squares, they include a legend to let you know what amenities are available if you were to pull on with your kayak. Things like a boat launch, is there food for sale? Are there restrooms, trash, recycling, et cetera? So the town hopes to launch this program in the near future, and we think it's a very exciting amenity for active transportation in the town of North Hempstead. So more to come on that. Next, we talked earlier about the um, quarter of a mile Baywalk Trail. And if you look on this map here, I put two red stars indicating where that finished um, pathway is today. So, what the future um, has in store is that it will start at the town dock. And these are plans that are underway with the town of North Hempstead working collaboratively, collaboratively with the community com stakeholder committee. But it would take you from the town dock all the way to where Baywalk exists now. 
continue to the end of Baywalk. And then there's also conversations going to continue with the village of Manor Haven to continue this through the Manor Haven Preserve and take you all the way to North Hempstead Beach Park. So the Bay Walk will eventually be really a full Bay Walk, which is very exciting. And lastly, I'm sure you have read a lot about this. Um, North Hempstead Beach Park, which is adjacent to the shoreline trail we talked about earlier, um, is getting a major renovation thanks to the town of North Hempstead. Um, they have um, announced and have shown everybody a beautiful uh, community visioning rendering that came out of a deep planning effort with many community charrettes. And as you can see from this image, there will be lots of walkways and recreational activities throughout. So I'm going to hand it over to Megan. Thank you. Um, I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat. Um, I really want to thank our presenters so much. There's such great and informative information in all of the presentations. Um, with spring upon us now, it really has provided some, some good ways to get outside, be active, and see these, these amazing sites that the town has to offer without using our cars, hopefully. Um, and I know this was a lot of information, so I definitely encourage everyone to either watch the recording again or go through the slides when we post them and share them um, and also share them widely with family, friends and anyone that, that lives in the town so they can get this information too. Um, so I don't see any questions yet, but we did have some nice comments. Um, everyone, we had a bunch of comments in the beginning about the bike share and how everyone is very excited about that. So very, very happy to hear that. Um, and there are some people who downloaded the app, that Port Washington app. So <laughs> that's great too. So get people on board with that. But I don't see any, any questions, questions. Um, so let's go to the next slide. And then if you do have any questions while I'm saying my my closing spiel, you can uh, put them in the chat still before we close. Um, so I do want to remind everyone that we have our final workshop in our transportation innovation series uh, titled Electric Vehicles 101. And that one is on Tuesday, April 12th at 2 p.m. And this one is going to actually be in person at Clinton G. Martin Park in New Hyde Park. Um, we're gonna be discussing the basics about electric vehicles and dispelling many myths that I'm sure people have heard about them. And then also a great thing is we're having a bunch of uh, car manufacturers bring electric vehicles for an EV show and tell. So you can actually see these cars in person, especially with gas prices so high now, people might be looking to uh, get an electric vehicle at this time. Uh, the workshop is free. Um, you can register at NorthHempsteadNY.gov slash climate action. And I can put that in the chat for everyone. Um, I don't see any more questions, but feel free to contact us. I'll put my email in the chat as well. So if you do have any questions after the fact, you can always email us and we'll be happy to answer anything for you. Um, I do want to thank our facilitators, speakers, and guests for joining us um, and all of this great information that they provided, um, as well as those that couldn't be here but did provide us some information for from the different chambers and bids. Um, and oh, we have one more question. Um, someone wants to know where Flower Hill Park is. You mean on Stony Town? I mean on um, Stony Town in Port Washington. It's um, it's by Stony. It's off of Stony Town Road. It's across the street from the Village Hall. Great, thank you. I just wanted to say one other thing about um, the electric vehicle one hundred and one. Um, with gas prices so high, um, and people really concerned about emissions and climate change. There's a lot of information out there about electric vehicles and sometimes it's a little overwhelming. And if you come to this session, I can guarantee you'll walk out educated and be able to walk into a dealer yourself and ask the right questions. You will be armed with the facts and the information. So 
the town wants you, they're not trying to persuade you any which way. They just want to make sure that you're informed and educated so that you can walk into a deal with confidence. Great. Thanks, Mindy. So I, I don't see any more questions, but I just want to thank everyone again. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and have a great evening, everyone. Get outside and do some walking and biking. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.